not so much. <laughs> um, we work on a um, reward system in here where the students earn coins, actual like fake pennies, nickels, dimes um, for every activity that they need to complete and we split the day into two parts. So they're rewarded for a recess for part one and a recess for part two. And um, they have a certain coin or money amount for each activity that they complete, whether it be the bathroom, whether it be reading instruction, whether it be special, whether it be lunch. And then in order to earn that recess, they have to take their money and, and pay for that. Mm -hmm. And then if we've had students who might tip a desk or hit someone, there's a, there's a penalty for that also, so they have to pay. So they're aware of how much money they're earning, they're aware of how much is going out. It really helps with math instruction because it only takes about a month for them to realize how much a dime is worth, how much a penny is worth, how to exchange them, what they're getting. We have our own little economy going on in here. <laughs> so uh, our, our money counting skills have definitely improved. No recession going <laughs> yeah. on in here. They have a I have a daily behavior chart that goes home. If there's like an extreme behavior, I keep like a, a log of 15 minute intervals in the day so we, if we, we can see it, what the pattern is and what's causing the behavior. And, but basically it's the money system, the behavior chart at the end of the day. The main disabilities, they're usually cognitively impaired. Um, we ha I do have a child with physical needs. Uh, he's cerebral palsy and he has a visual impairment also. Most of them have I IQs lower than like 70. Uh, my students are, they're a mix of classifications, most being in the emotionally disturbed um, classification, but there's some multiply disabled. Well, we do small group instruction. Um, I try to teach the course standards because we are responsible to take um, the alternate proficiency assessment. Try to teach the course standards lowered to a level where they can understand. Um, we use a lot of manipulatives, a lot, lot of hands-on. Um, we have great technology. We have a smart board and we have a smart table besides the computers. The computers now are no big deal to the kids because they'd rather work at the smart board or the smart table. They also have laptops. The child with the visual impairment uses a laptop because we can make, he also has um, fine motor problems. So by typing he's able to write and do work independently and I could make it as large as I need to so that he could, he could read it. A lot of his worksheets are put in to the computer. We scan them and send them right to his laptop hmm. and he can complete his activities on the laptop. Um, the modifications and accommodations in my room are mainly behavioral. Most of the students are functioning on grade level. I, I use the manipulatives and the small group instruction, but the behavioral modifications are things like a, like a daily schedule so the kids know what they're doing and helps transition. Um, in the beginning of the year, we have a, like a corner that they can go to if they're angry where we put a bean bag or stress balls and teach them you know, how to express their frustration or emotions in a positive way. There's a lot of um, role playing to reenact situations after they happen to show them the more positive take on, on what went wrong. Um, in kindergarten and first grade, it is the land of tattletaling. So as a physical prompt, instead of continually reminding the students no tattles, we can just point to it as a, as a visual reminder, no tattletales. We don't hang it on anyone or <laughs> put it on their desks, it stays on the wall, but we can just point. And they have a, a visual reminder of what a tattletale is. All of my students have IEPs. Um, as far as the IEP process, when the students come to me, they already have IEPs and I follow the IEP that was developed the year before. And then around March and April, we start the annual review process where we meet and decide what we feel is the best placement for the student. And we meet with the parents and develop goals and objectives and the placement for the following year. Uh, in February or March of every year, we sit down we figure out what the goals and objectives are that we want for our children for next year. And then we write the goals and objectives. We meet with the parents after they, the IEP has been completed, show our parents the IEP, and then we make any changes or corrections that they feel is important. 
When I get a new child in September, I look at their IP and make sure everything is implemented for that year. Oh, swimming. We look forward to that. Uh, it's in January of every year. The children, we use it as a learning experience for life skills of dressing and undressing. So they come to school with clothes on. They must learn to undress themselves and change into a bathing suit. And uh, swimming is eight weeks, once a week. And the children go to the college and Red Cross instructors decide what level they are at, and everybody gets in the pool, including teachers and aides, and we swim with the kids, and they have really gotten much better at swimming. Children who were afraid to get in the pool now get in the pool, they love it, and hopefully they'll be safer with all the lakes we have around here. Uh, the swimming program was a lot of fun. Um, I used it as a behavior mod program in my class where the students, um, if they had a behavior, a negative behavior, they would lose time out of the pool. I think at most the students lost maybe five minutes tops out of the pool, but it was, it was a great program. They had a lot of fun. They learned water safety. They learned how to swim, and it was they just had a great time. They went to Burlington County College every Monday for eight weeks. During community-based instruction, uh, the kids get to go into the community, to the grocery stores, to talk with people, and see people that they might see uh, when they're out with their parents. Uh, we've typically gone to places like the Acme to shop for food, to, and we use that. We shop for food for a purpose. Either we're going to prepare something for ourselves, or we've even prepared for other people. We did that at Christmas time. We made cookies for the, for the senior citizens at the senior center. Um, we use this as a learning experience where they made cookies, they were reading recipes, measuring, and learning skills, uh, health skills too. You know, how to have clean hands, not to touch your face, how we don't put things in our mouth while we're making food, and um, other activities we've done. We studied uh, e ecology and we went uh, to the Burlington County Recycling Center when we learned about how to recycle. During science we've learned about animals and animal habitats and we visited the zoo. We went to the beach with our study of New Jersey. And um, the children react very well. They, they've learned how to, to go out into the community and to be good citizens in the community how to behave, that you walk in a restaurant, you don't run in the store, you ask questions politely, and it, it's been really a, a good year for the children. They've learned a lot. Extended school year, our ESY program is made up of a group of uh, four to six classes. We have children throughout the district, and we, we have the kids divided by age groups. So. We'll have them by grade level in a group. There's usually about 16 in a class, and there typically is a teacher and two or three aides. We divide up, we do center activities, and we'll do literacy for half the time and math and other skills, as well as technology. Um, the extended school year program is for students who would regress over the summer and it's a five-week program Monday through Thursday. We usually take community-based trips on Thursdays to expose the students to different, um, different environments, different experiences. Um, the, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. The kids really enjoy it and it reviews the skills that they've learned during the school year and introduces them to some new concepts.